Hello, my name is Roy Simpson, professor of mathematics at Cosumnes River College in Sacramento, California. This video is a second video in a series on numerical methods for approximating solutions to differential equations for students who are taking differential equations. It is assumed that you've watched my video on an introduction to numerical methods for differential equations. In that video, we talk about what numerical methods are, why we need them, and then also reviewed a couple small topics from our differential calculus course, specifically partitioning intervals and linearization. Both of those will be necessary for this topic here. Now, diving into the first of the numerical methods called Euler's method. Before we go too deeply into it, I do want to make sure that you know what a slope field is. This is a field of what we call lineal elements. The field itself is called a slope field or a direction field, just depends on who your instructor is or what textbook you're reading from, whatever it may be. But these lineal elements represent the slope of the solution curve at each given point. Obviously, I have a very coarse set of lineal elements. That is, I don't have lineal elements uh, spread all over the place with barely uh, any room between them. And the reason why I have some space is so we can see what's going on, so it's not cluttered. But the idea is that when you're handed a first order, and I should have uh, mentioned it in the last video, but if I didn't, I'll state it here. When you're dealing with numerical methods, at least Euler's method, improved Euler's method, and then the Runge-Kutta methods, you're dealing with first order differential equations. There are numerical methods for other or higher order differential equations, but that's not the purview of this video series right now. Anyhow, imagine that you've been handed y prime is equal to some messiness, but it's a function of x and y. Well, you could plug in values for x and y, let's say x equals one, y equals one, into that function of x and y to determine the slope of your solution that goes through one one. And when I say the slope, I'm abusing language there. Really, I mean the slope of the tangent line to your solution at the point one one. Most people still call it the slope. So creating this field of lineal elements, which again, we call a direction field or a slope field, just comes down to plugging in points into f of x, y, where f of x, y is equal to y prime. When you plug those points in, they give you the slope at that instant to your tangent lines, to your uh, solution curves. And then what you do is you just draw a small little length having that slope. And that small little line having that slope is called a lineal element. Now let's just suppose that this direction field or slope field represents the slope field for a differential equation, first order, where a solution curve to that differential equation is this guy right here. So as you can see in the upper right hand corner, I call it solution curve. We're gonna be using the same solution curve for the improved Euler's method and the runge kutta methods as well. We're gonna go ahead and say that X sub zero, Y sub zero is our initial condition. So somebody comes in the room and they say, hey, I've got this differential equation, Y prime is equal to the square root of Y sine of X, which is actually what you're looking at. The slope field for Y prime is equal to the square root of Y sine of x. And then they come in and say, oh, by the way, my initial condition is I require when x is one, that y is something else, whatever it may be. And that's what this initial condition down here is. Now I'm going to turn off the slope field because it's just going to get in our way, but we're going to start generating the idea of Euler's method. With Euler's method, we're going to start at our initial condition, the point that you handed me or that you have been handed yourself. And because they gave you a very specific point as an initial condition, you can plug that point into your function f of x, y, which is y prime, to find out the slope of the tangent line to your solution curve at that very moment. And you can see right here what I've said. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna compute f of x sub i, y sub i. In our case, we started with x, x not y not. But if you're at the ith iteration, well then x sub i, y sub i. And that will give you the slope of the lineal element at that point. Now, what do you do with that? Remember, in the reality, you do not know what your solution curve looks like. So all you know is you have a point in space and you have a lineal element pointing in a direction. Well, this comes down to talking about the fact that we partition a given interval into n sub intervals, each having width h. So let's say that we have some interval going from 
x equals 1 to x equals 2. And I chose x equals 1 because that's our initial condition. Somebody said at 1, the y value should be, and they gave us a value. But then they say, I need you to approximate the value of the solution at x equals 2. So that means I need to get from x equals 1 all the way over to x equals 2 somehow by approximations. So I'll take that interval from x equals 1 to x equals 2 and I'll dice it into a bunch of sub intervals and I'll go by little baby steps. And my first baby step is to graph this lineal element and then use that lineal element to fire a shot ahead in the distance of this length here, the length from the beginning x value, which is x naught or x sub zero to this second x value, that's actually a distance of h. And if I turn on my function, you'll see x naught or x sub zero is right here. That's our initial x value. I'm just gonna go ahead and use this lineal element to fire a shot to arrive at x sub one, but along the lineal element line, or in other words, along the extended lineal element line. Where that lands, I'm gonna call that y sub one. Again, we started at x sub zero, y sub zero. I used the lineal element there to fire a shot along the line, h units ahead, to arrive at a point. And that new point is an approximation to what I think that the solution curve y value should be. You can see there's a massive amount of error, but this is the best you can do with this very, very, very coarse method. Again, we step forward h units. Technically, because we're going along a line and lines have a slope called rise over run, we rose h times f of x naught y naught units when we ran h units. How do I know that? Because the slope of this tangent line or lineal element here is f of x sub zero y sub zero. And I know rise over run is supposed to equal that. Well, I ran h. So I had to rise a certain amount so that the ratio of the rise over h is f of x sub zero, y sub zero. So I rose h times f of x sub zero, y sub zero. That's actually going to be an important statement. Notice there is an error here. We'll call that error e sub one. And you can easily compute that error by just saying, well, what's the difference between the y value at x sub one, the true y value, which normally you would not have, but during a homework assignment, generally they give you the actual function. So you take the difference between that y value and your approximated y value, which is called y sub one. So the steps to Euler's method are listed right here. Compute the slope of the lineal element at x sub one y or x sub zero y sub zero. And this will produce the next y value, y sub i plus one, which is right here, is just our previous y value, y sub zero, plus this rise, which is h times f of x sub zero, y sub zero. That's how we got to the second point. And you can repeat this process by saying, well, let me find the slope of the lineal element at my new point. Notice the slope of the lineal element at my new point is at my new approximated point. So the bad thing about approximation methods is that you're using an approximation to make another approximation. That is, I'm using this approximated y value right here to then get a lineal element whose slope is actually an approximation to what the slope should be at y of x sub one. It's a little bit of an approximation on top of an approximation. And because of that, errors can grow wildly with Euler's method. But that's not to say that it's a bad technique. It's just that errors can grow wildly. Well, just like we did last time, we're gonna go ahead and start at this lineal element, just at this point, x sub one, y sub one, and we're gonna take a shot along this line, trying to you know keep the shot straight along the line and go out horizontally h units. So let's go ahead and see how that looks. And you can see firing the shot forward, we get our next approximation. This will be x sub two, y sub two. So again, we stepped forward h units. We rose again, the rise is just h times f of x sub one, y sub one. And so if you look at this formula over here, we basically are saying just to get to the next y value, we're taking our previous y value, which was x sub one, or sorry, y sub one right here. We take that previous y value, which is about this height, and we're gonna add to it h times f of x sub one, 
y sub 1 to arrive at our newest y value, which is y sub 2. And that'll be our approximation for y of x sub 2. Now, if I'm doing step sizes, let's just pretend that I'm start at x equals 1 and I'm trying to get to x equals 2 to approximate the value of the solution to this differential equation at x equals 2. And let's suppose we dice that into uh, 10 sub intervals. So what I've basically done so far is I would have started at x equals one and some official initial condition output and then gone to x equals 1.1 and got some approximation to the y value there and then gotten to x equals 1.2 and had a y value approximation to the solution there. And then I would do the same thing over and over again until I get all the way over to x equals two. By the time you get to x equals two, your errors might be crazy bad. But this is the idea of Euler's method. So let's go ahead and just showcase by hand how you would do this. Not that you'd want to do this by hand, but of all of the techniques, the methods that you can use to approximate solutions to differential equations, Euler's method is probably the easiest to do, definitely the easiest to do by hand. The other methods require massive amounts of technology. All right, so let's go ahead and approximate the solution to this IVP at 1.5 using h equals 0 0.1. First of all, you have to kind of decipher what all that means. We want to approximate the solution to this differential equation at y equals 1.5. We're given that when x equals one, y is equal to one. So that gives us an initial point for our lineal element. And we're taking the interval that actually starts at x equals one and ends at x equals 1.5. We're gonna dice it into n sub intervals of equal width 0.1. Now the easiest way to do this by hand, which by the way is not the preferred way to do this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it by hand anyway is to make a table of values. And we happen to know that Euler's method goes like this. The next Y value in line, our next approximated Y value is our previous Y value plus H times F at X sub I, Y sub I, where F of X, Y is the right hand side of this explicit ODE that is first order. So in this case, F of X, Y would be 2xy. Now, when I build my tables, I kind of uh, add in a little helper column here. So I know when i is zero, that's our initial point, our initial index. Well, x sub zero is our initial x value for our initial condition. And y sub zero is, well, our initial y value for our initial condition. And I know that we're going to continue this table down for a few iterations. So let me go ahead and extend this down a little bit. And remember to get to each subsequent X sub I, we'll just add H to whatever our previous X sub I is. We're just stepping forward by step sizes of H. Our H in this case is 0.1. So X sub one would be 1.1, X sub two would be 1.2 and so on and so forth. That part, not so bad. To compute the next y value, I'll need to use this formula that we have right up here to the upper right. And honestly, I like, like I said, a helper column for this. So I'm gonna have a column called h f of x sub i comma y sub i. This is essentially the column that tells me how far am I gonna climb from y sub i to get to the next y value in line. Now remember, each one of these is gonna have an h, so I'll just go ahead and start with pre-filling in the values of h, and then looking at my function f of x sub y, I know it's two times x y, so I'll go ahead and fill in that as well. And honestly, I don't have to actually do that last one. I only need that last one if I'm going to go to the next y value in line, so you'll see it when we go through it. Saving myself a little bit of computational technology, I'm gonna go ahead and double up all those point ones. This would be normally done by you uh, in a simple single step. So you would not have written out your entire table like this. You would have written your table like this. And then filling in the values. So X sub zero, Y sub zero is just, they're just one and one. So I'll just fill those in. So again, you would not have actually filled in all those 
0.2 x sub 1 y sub 1 0.2 x sub 2 y sub 2 i filled that in for your visual pleasure i suppose just so that you could see what i'm going to be doing but now i'm really going to just showcase how it's done okay so i'm going to erase all these and showcase how you would build it using a table so this y value is going to be the next y value in line and the next y value is the sum of this product and this y value so it's 1 plus 0.2 or 1.2 now what what is h times f of x sub 1 y sub 1 remember f of x sub 1 y sub 1 is 2xy your function f of x y will change obviously depending upon what you're working with and at this point you're going to see i'm going to need a calculator and there are some major issues with grabbing a calculator i mean massive issues actually but let's just suppose that you were told you've got to do this by hand up to that fifth one kind of cruel but let's pretend as though that's the case so what I do is I move everything kind of over to give myself some room. I multiply all that stuff out and I add to that the 1.2 and I will get 1.464. Now remember, H is 0.1 times 2 times the X value times that Y value. And then I compute that and add this and I'll get 1.81536. Again, h times f of x sub let's see three y sub three is going to be 0.1 times two times 1.3 times 1.81536 and you can see how exhausting this will get but we'll go ahead and we're almost done anyway take that product and add it to that and you get this value right here which might be rounded i have no clue i don't think it is actually i think we're still within uh the floating Point accuracy of my calculator so I think it's still pretty okay and again h times 2 times x times y taking that product adding it to that item we'll get our y sub 5 which is our y value estimation at 1.5 which looks to be approximately that value right there what does this mean well it means that whatever our true solution is our approximate value for that solution at 1.5 is roughly 2.92781260. Now, note, I tried not to round any of the values that I computed. However, you might be working in an online homework system and they might say something like, round your answer to the nearest five decimal places. If that's the case, you would round like that. Now, I know you know how to round, so why did I mention that? It's because they're asking you to round your last displayed answer. In other words, you only round displayed things. You never compute with rounded values. So when you go through and build a table like this by hand, dear God, I hope you do not have to, but let's pretend as though you do, then don't round at any point in your computations. You only round to display to the reader. That's it. But you don't even, if you want to go further, you're not even gonna touch this rounded value right here because, well, you'll create massive round off errors at that point. And in fact, now that I said that, I should mention there are really two huge types of errors that will occur when you're using any type of numerical technique like this. And I don't mean arithmetic errors that you might make. I mean, just if you do everything correctly, there are still two types of errors that you generally get. The first kind is called a truncation error. And a truncation error, it just comes from the fact that you're using linearization to approximate your next Y value. That alone introduces an error because obviously your curve, your solution curve that you're working with does not follow a linear path. So using the linearized function to approximate the Y value, let's just say right here at X sub one, is already bad. So that's called a truncation error. The second kind of error is really what we know of as a round off error. This is what happens when you round early or perhaps you're using a computer to do the work. Your computer only has so much in the way of precision with finite arithmetic. And so if you start getting to numbers that, well, let's say have 32 digits or greater than 32 digits uh, past the decimal point, your computer program or programming language that you're using might not be able to hold that excess 
amount of numbers. And so what happens is you get round off errors because of that. So round off errors are really computer driven and truncation errors are more of just by design of the actual algorithm. Now, a little heads up, the differential equation that we're working with here, we could actually solve. That's a very nice separable differential equation. So if you want to, you can go ahead, actually it's separable, it's also linear. So you could go ahead and solve this using separation of variables to check your solution. And of course, when I say C there, I, it just means it's a constant of integration that absorbs other constants, but you get to this point right here. And now subbing in our initial condition, we get that this should have been our actual solution. We could have analytically done this, but let's go ahead and compare the real solution at 1.5 to what our approximated solution is. And you can see at 1.5, given that initial condition, at 1.5, our true solution gives us an approximate value of 3.49 and some change. Our estimated solution using Euler's method is 2.92 and some change. So you can see there's definitely some error there. Remember, the error at any given step, in this case, this is a fifth step, is just the difference in absolute value between the true solution at that step and the approximated solution at that step. So if you take a look at our true solution, y of 1.5 is that 3.49034 and some change, and our approximated y sub five is 2.92. So if you just take the difference between those, you will find that our error is approximately, and for display purposes, I'll just round it to five decimal places, that value right there. So we're greater than a half off, and that might not be within the tolerance that you want. So what would you do? Well, you have some choices here. One, you could increase how fine-toothed the method you're using is. That is, if you want to arrive at 1.5, if that's what you want to estimate the y value at, well, you can use a smaller step size. Use h equals 0 0.05. So you get double the number of steps to get there, but each time you have a smaller error in your approximation. It's more costly because you're doing twice the number of computations, but your error should be significantly less if you do that. Or you can go to a completely different and improved method. Before we do that though, I do want to showcase that you can actually compute this or do this in a spreadsheet program. So let's go ahead and hop over to Excel. I'm going to use Excel, but you could use uh, Sheets. It does the same thing. But let's hop over there and see how this is done. Now, when I do this, I don't want to get too much into the gory details of how to use Excel. You should possibly already know how to do that. But if you don't, I'm not going to get into it. I'm just going to go ahead and list out basically what I listed out before. I, X sub I, Y sub I. And then we had H, F of X sub I, Y sub I. Now you can automate a lot of what I'm going to be doing here. But my task here is to not show you how to automate Excel. My task is to show you how to just set something up so you can use Euler's method very quickly. Remember, I always starts at zero and then goes to one and so on and so forth. One little trick I can tell you how to do here is if you highlight two cells in Excel and you grab the bottom right hand corner and drag, it'll continue that pattern if there's a pattern set. So I'll just drag down until I get 10. And then I also know that my X values are gonna go from one, right? Cause that's where our interval started and we wanted to go to 1.5. I'm actually just gonna go to two because of something I wanna show you in a moment. So off to the right, you don't have to do this. You could, by the way, you have just said, this is equal to this previous step plus 0.1. You could totally do that. And then take that lower right-hand corner and you can either drag or double click. Now notice that again, my X sub I values, I'm actually having them go to two. You don't have to do that. I'm just doing something for my purpose here. Our initial Y value, Y sub zero was one. And now I'm gonna compute our H times the quantity f of x sub zero y sub zero just by saying equals our h value remember was 0 0.1 and i'm going to go ahead and say times 
And then our f of x sub zero, y sub zero was two times the x value times the y value. Hit enter and you get that right there. And remember to get to this next y value, we just say that it is equal to the previous y value plus that h of x sub i, y sub i. Now you can take this and you can drag it down and you'll see that it says 1.2 all the way down because it's looking for values here that I haven't filled out yet. But now I'm gonna take this and drag this down as well. And you can see very nicely, and let me open this up a bit so you can see these numbers a little bit better. You can see our approximation for 1.5. There it is. Our solution approximated at x equals 1.5 was roughly 2.92781260A. I'm glad it came out to be the same in Excel because that tells me my by hand work was fine. Another thing I might want to do is just for my purposes, display as many digits as I can. To do that, I'm going to actually start with no decimal places and then increase it till I get to nine. Just so I can see nine decimal places of accuracy throughout. That's just a personal preference, no biggie. And the other thing you might want to do is have on here the true y value since we know what the actual function is the solution is for this initial value problem i can say well i want to know what the true value of x sub i is remember our solution was equal to e to the x squared and e in excel is exp so exp of the x value squared minus one i'll go ahead and double click that lower right hand corner and you'll see it drags down and you can see again the same thing that this was what we got before for our approximate value let me open that up and also increase the number of decimal places i think that'll work and then if you want to compute the error you can just say e sub i to compute the error at that ith moment or what we call the ith iteration that is going to equal the absolute value of the difference between the true value of the solution curve at that x sub z i minus your approximated value of y sub i at that x sub i your initial error will be zero because there's zero error at your initial condition however that error will grow as you step away from your initial condition you can see it right there so our error gets pretty bad if we go all the way out to two now remember we're trying to get to 1.5 and right now with a step size or, or h of 0.1 we have this kind of large error, but if you want to decrease that error, you can actually set H to be something else. So over here, I'm just going to say H equals, and in the next cell, I'll type in 0.1 for now. And what I'm going to do here, wherever I'm using my H, notice in the formula, I don't know if you can see it up there, but there's a formula up there where I have 0.1 for H. I'm actually going to trade that out and just click on this cell right here. So that it says, oh, you want to know what H is? I'll just look over at that cell. You don't have to do this. I'm just giving you a little trick. And if I were to hit enter, nothing really changes. But if I drag this down, some weird things happen. And the reason why that happened was because when I dragged it down, it also moved this reference to this cell right here down one as well. So if it click in the cell and I, I just click up here, you'll see that's referencing this emptiness. How do I lock that in place? Well, if you know anything about Excel, you put dollar signs in front of both the I and the one, or you just hit F4. F4 will lock that in place. And now when I double click the lower right hand corner, there you go, you get all your numbers back, sort of. The other place that we used H was in computing the next step in line for the X value. So if I were to have built this entire table with what we call absolute cell references, so I were to say, instead of looking at the x value prior and adding 0.1 like concretely saying that's what my h is always going to be if i would have just said oh you know what just add whatever this is oh by the way lock that in place with an f4 then when i double click the lower right hand corner of the cell nothing seems to happen until i change my value of h to half of what it was and notice now that i get all the way to 1.5 because i took twice the number of steps to get there but my approximation to my true value at 1.5, remember the true value is 3.49 and change, is a little bit better. My error before was greater than a half and now it's a little bit less than a third. And you can do this all day long if you want to. Uh, if I want to uh, increase the number of possible steps here, let me go ahead and just drag this down to 20 and I'll double click here and I'll double click here and double click here, double click here, double click here. 
Of course, now it's going all the way to two, but what I'm gonna do is change my H by dividing it by two. So I have even a finer tooth comb looking at this data and notice what happens. I get all the way with 20 steps to X equals 1.5 my error is now down to 0.17, roughly. It's a costly method, Euler's is, but we will improve it in the next video. I hope to see you there.